Yes, welcome to this episode where we talk about productivity as you being the highest version of yourself. I know that we are work in progress, but I know that it is very attainable and we get to talk about, you know, how to govern your life. We talk about how to divide your time, how to create focus, how to create momentum and how to get whatever it is that you want out of life. It's very possible. So as we go through this, I want you to be able to discover where you are in life and the things that you must change in order to gain the mastery and the productivity that you want. And this applies to all of us. Whether you're the CEO, whether you're a, uh, you know, a government person, whether you're an organizational leader, whether you're um, a normal person like you and I, you know, I want us to be able to get into this moment and know that we can be able to get unstuck and get into the next level of our lives, of our productivity and of our performance and of our results. It's very possible. <laughs> Life is very important, but again, when we uncomplicate it, it becomes even more important and simple. Sometimes we hold on to so many things and we end up doing nothing. And that's part of what we're going to talk about uh, today. And uh, just welcoming you and um, thanking you for being productive and not just busy, because so many people are just moving around and saying, I am busy, I am busy, I am busy. But again, it has also become an excuse over time and it's just not helping. But productivity, on the other hand, we can always get into the loop, fall in the line and get back on track, even when we get off track, because so many times we are swayed. There are so many distractions that are happening in the world, and that is why we're talking about productivity. So many distractions that are happening day in, day out, every second, of every second, every microsecond, something is happening somewhere in the world. And sometimes we make it our business to know. Through our feeds, we make it our business to know through our friends we make it our business to know through so many other avenues but again that will be for another day today let's concentrate on your productivity when we talk about productivity and um, and talk about uh, mastery these two things for me move hand in hand i've actually gone on a journey and i've talked about part of the things that we're going to talk about are things that i have discovered over time that have been quite helpful for me and if they were very helpful for me then i know they can be very helpful for you so we are going to share in this and by the time we end this we are going to pick up one or two things that we can be able to apply in our lives and be able to thrive and be able to be happy but most importantly be productive in your life now productivity when you're just beginning uh, it's something that you have to do very intentionally it's something that you have to plan for and it's something that you have to work towards okay when we get to the mastery level however I have found through experience that it becomes now the subconscious because your engine has been running over time you have been doing the same things over time and now those things have become more of a habit they have become more like rituals they have become more like routines in your life that even without thinking about them you end up doing them now productivity Palm performs well at the level of mastery, not at the level of the, uh, uh, at the beginning, we are just getting into the flow. At the beginning, we're getting the engine warmed up. At the beginning, we get so we are intentional, we plan, we are willful, and we are deliberate about what we are doing. So that means you have to keep, um, when you're just beginning this product productivity journey, and you can be productive at your work, you can be productive in your relationship, you can be productive in your parenting journey, you can be productive in so many spheres of life. But productivity demands that there are results, and the results that are tangible. That you know what, I was working towards uh, being uh, stress-free, okay? Or I was working towards having um, a beautiful family. I was working towards making more money. And I am working towards uh, creating freedom for myself when it comes to financials. I am working, what are you working towards? Now, when you work at something uh, long enough, consistently, you show up every day, you become intentional, you realize that a time comes and they say so-and-so is so hardworking, but maybe you didn't start as a hardworking person, but you showed up, you, you put in the work, you reminded yourself, even when you didn't feel like it, and now it has become a part of you that you just can't do about it, uh, without it. 
How do addictions come about? Addictions start like any other harmless kind of routine or harmless kind of activity or habit. So what happens is this person gets too much accustomed to doing the same thing and sometimes even every day at a particular hour that with time it becomes a subconscious need for their body that they can't function without it and so they tend to be addicted and people are addicted to so many things people get addicted to food people get addicted to sex people get addicted to drugs people get addicted to people you just get addicted okay so but with productivity we're not saying you're getting a, a, a addicted and an, an addiction because ad addiction has a connotation of negativity with productivity we're saying now you are performing in your best in your flow okay like you have created the systems and the systems now have created who you are and they have simplified your life okay so I just want to simplify this even more. When I was starting in my, um, in, in my coaching uh, journey, it was very intentional. I know I had gone through other, other areas that did not work for me. And I said, you know what, this is just not good. IT is not going to work. Uh, I love business, but again, I, uh, uh, business, um, uh, you know, business, there are different types of businesses, the transactional kind uh, of where you sit in a shop and, uh, you know, everything uh, comes to you. I got to know that that too is not, I'm not cut out for that. So I eliminated the things that were not working out for me and I concentrated on the things that were working out for me that I loved coaching, I loved speaking, and then I loved authoring, writing books. I loved I loved such I, I loved such things. So I concentrated on what I was actually doing. So very early on in life before even I got to know that there existed a rule that can give you good results when it comes to productivity. And the rule is the 90-91. I know for some of us, some of us know it, some of us don't know it, but I'll re-echo it anyway. The 90-91 demands that you take 90 days and respect the 90, first, first, first 90 minutes of the day and dedicate them to your game-changing opportunity. And that means you have to define what is your game-changing opportunity. What is that particular thing that you really think that if I put in my hole, it is going to elevate me, it is going to accelerate me, it is going to change the results, and it's going to change the trajectory of my life. Just one thing. I have not said a thousand things, I have not said ten things, I have not said fifteen things, I have said one thing. And I remember the time that I decided to do that. I didn't know that this rule existed and I didn't exactly do 90 minutes. But one thing I knew, and I didn't exactly do 90, uh, 90 days, I knew that I had to take time. And if I was going to be a master at something, I had to put in the effort and the time and be deliberate about it. So what I discovered when I talk about the morning, waking up early in the morning, and some people asked, even on social media, I, I remember on TikTok, someone, but why do we wake up early in the morning? I was like, ah, if you don't know why you wake up early in the morning, stay in your lane. But let me stay in my lane of the morning people because I know what it has done for me. That if I commit and I deliberately committed the first hours of my life before any chaos, before I picked up a phone, before I did anything actually to my devotion to my devotional time, my prayer time, and then working on what was the most important. Say for example, when I was writing Deliberately Selfish, for the whole year I was writing Deliberately Selfish, every two hours of the day I committed to writing that book. Every two hours of the day. I was either editing, I was either changing the manuscript, I was either, you know, adding in this, I was either doing this, because that consumed my thoughts. And that created a mastery that when you asked me about deliberately selfish, like I was consumed, I was eaten, I was lost into it. Now, when the time came to writing tears on my pillow, I still took a deep dive. Now, you can never be shallow and expect to have deep results and expect to have uh, bigger results. That's not going to happen. So I took another deep, uh, a deep dive. I remember even uh, my husband would say that, you know what, you're really concentrating on that thing. Because I had to shoot uh, the, uh, uh, the information. I had to shoot the whole course. And then I had to make sure that apart from shooting, I had online classes. Apart from, so I had to prepare for anything. And I would take time to prepare before 
before a class. I would take time to prepare before a shoot. I would take time to... Re and while I was doing all these things, not because I had so many gadgets and what, but with the little that I had, I concentrated, I took a deep, a deep dive, and I let that information consume me that... The people that came after that, everyone was like, you know what? You have touched my life in ways that no one has touched my life. But that result would never have happened. People are thriving right now. They are being, you know, brand influencers. They're being good coaches. They're earning money. They're being uh, authors. Why? Because I, do, I took a deep dive. I concentrated a certain amount of time. And uh, I concentrated it to that particular one life game-changing thing that I wanted to drive home. And I made sure. And for me, I don't take no for an answer. And I don't believe in the middle ground. I believe it's either excels or excels because I do not deal with something that is mediocre. I do not deal with something that is not cutting it for me. I will look at something mediocre and I'll be like, no, 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 that is not for me. So that means that I go at a deeper level. Sometimes I have had to actually not just go the mastery of reading and understanding things, but the mastery of the deep dive of praying and fasting for everyone that will come through my program and everyone that will watch my programs. Why? Because I am orchestrating a movement of people that believe in personal growth and people that do not take no for answers and believe that people that believe in game-changing opportunities. 